Guys, welcome to a brand new edition of Full Time Reds. Um, I'm very excited about today's show. Going to be doing something different. I've not done this in a while. Um, today, we're going to be joined by somebody very special, somebody doing amazing work in the Manchester United um, fan space, covering news. He's got his own YouTube channel, doing some amazing work in that space, like I said. Very excited to announce. Today, we're joined by none other than Sal from Stratford Post. Sal, how are you? I'm very well, Bilal. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, really good, Sal. Really good. I know we've been trying to organise this for quite a while and time zones are different, but I really appreciate you taking time out today and joining me um, to discuss all things in the ever-changing and fast-moving space of Manchester United. How have you been this week? How have you? How are things overall? Are you excited of what's going on? Yeah, I'm a, a bit more positive this this uh, window than any other window, to be honest. I'm hearing a lot of positive noises, so that's only a good thing. Obviously, we've got the tunnel. we got the new tunnel going on. Yeah, so, the, tu- the, the tunnel's on. The tunnel is <laughs> so happening. We, we can be excited about that, do you know what I mean? It's been a while since we changed that tunnel, but, you know, we can be excited about a few things. But nothing has materialised yet. So cautious optimism, I would say. Yeah, so in today's show, Sal, basically, I want to cover... The, the problem with Manchester United is things just move so quick. You know what we cover today will probably go become very old or change tomorrow. But I want to mm-hmm. cover a couple of things um, in today's show which are going to touch upon um, how United are moving, what looks like could be the first few signings, where we feel the outgoings might be, and lastly, um, the leadership team as well. But to start things off with, how do you feel we're moving this summer compared to other summers? Um, I think we're moving in a... Well, nothing is proven yet. So I, of course, I mean, but so far, so far. So far, I feel good. I feel good. I feel like they're doing um, work behind the scenes, things we haven't done before. Of course, we've got Will Cosperada, etc. You know, um, we're building a, a backroom staff, which we haven't done. We're we changing had, the... Really. the hmm? We've never really had a backroom of like no, this. No, we really, never really had a, a, a good backroom staff. People were experts at their job. It was all, we were winging it, to be honest, for the last 10 years. We were just winging it and signing the best players and thinking we're going we're gonna to challenge for the title. But now it seems more structured to it. It seems like we're, we're really going for the, um, the professional, proper way of doing things, which we should have done a long time ago anyway. But it's good noise. Different transfers as well. Different noises as well. Not just one transfer we're going after. There's a few names out there being scattered about as well. Sal, you know, um, what what I found really different about this summer was uh, so far, um, which I found really, really interesting is, um, you know, we're not normally what would happen is we would be like, OK, United are linked with Mason Mount. Yeah. And then that would go on for, let's say, four, five, six weeks. And it's Mason Mount. And we'll pay X amount. Okay, fine. But what I've noticed, especially with the Branthway deal, is we or, or the Toribo or or Euro deals are that we're working on multiple targets at the same time. So if 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 one says, for example, Branthway, they want seventy five million for him. There's delay, and then there's options. Do you not find that? It's quite refreshing to see. I know I'm stating the obvious, but I, I, we've never seen this before. It's one player, like even with Harry Maguire, it was Harry Maguire or nothing. We didn't have any other options. And it just seems that it's just more well thought out. Yeah, 100%. I mean, in the past, we would be after one player for so long and then we'll wait till the last minute, realise we can't get that player. And then we'll panic. And then we'll buy someone who, who won't, doesn't fit the actual mould that we want. You know, so it's good to see. It's good to see that we're... We're not held to ransom. I know that's a, a quote that we've used a lot in the past, but it's, it's good that we're not being held to ransom and Everton are not going to mug us off with the uh, Branthwaite deal. So it's good that we're going over other options as well. I like, that, I like that about United. We're moving on this time, you know, because last season, the season before and, and previous seasons, the, the most important thing is we haven't had our team in before the preseason. We haven't had our full transfers in by the before the preseason, so we couldn't work on tactics, we couldn't work on shape and style, etc. And and managers been left in a lurch, to be honest with you. So it is refreshing, 
I like the news. I like Branthwaite, but obviously we can't overpay for these for these players. And I like the way we're just moving on and moving on to other targets. To be honest, just on about Branthwaite, what the value in him about seventy five? Let's call it seventy. If you can get delayed for, for call it forty arguments, say it's chalk and cheese. Branthwaite's never even played in Europe, and they're valuing him at seventy mil. I know, it's I know. Crazy. Yeah, he played for PSV, obviously in the in the Eredivisie, obviously. Well, uh, but. The thing is, um, we can't overpay. We can't pay that much for a player who's relatively unproven. You can go to, like, even if you look at Euro 2024, you see players who are playing for, you know, Slovakia and teams like Turkey. that who are, yeah, really good. And, you know, these players could get be bought for a fraction of the price who've got more experience. You know, Branthway is a risk. We, he would represent a risk. The only thing is, um, if Man City do come lurking around the corner and, and take him and he ends up being a world-class new John Stone, Stone, so to speak, and then we'll be regretting it. But we can't be paying. We ain't in a position to be paying that sort of money at the moment. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna, yeah. Just coming back to the leadership team, what are your thoughts generally around it? So you've got Barada, you, who starts next week. You've got Wilcox, who came in April. You've got Ashworth, who started on Monday. And Vavel, is it Vavel? Is that how you pronounce it? Christopher Vavel yeah. is in there. Um, you've obviously got Blanc in there. It's quite a lot considering we had Fergie who ran the show and it was just Fergie and his brother and Gil and uh, before that Martin Edwards. And then we had Ed Woodward that just ran the show and suddenly we've got like five to eight people. What you're just generally... Do, do you, do you, could, you, could there be too many chiefs? Or do you think they'll have defined roles or... Um, too many chefs in the kitchen, isn't it? That's what. That's, that's right. What they yeah. Say. Too many chefs. I mean, I've, I've been a United fan like close to forty years, so yeah. I'm not used to this kind of thing. You know, the, you need uh, how many people to change a light bulb? You know, it's just, it's just uh, obviously Bevel, the recruitment guy. He's going to help with recruitment. So uh, what are the others doing then? It's like you know, it's a bit, it's a bit much. You know, a Barada, Wilcox. You know. <laughs> I think it's a big team. You know, they can't make any excuses now. They certainly can't make it's, any excuses about the transfers. It's a big job as well, though, isn't it, Sal? If you think about it, in a sense of it's, a, it's, it's, it's such a mess. You probably need so many people looking at it. And, and because you need to hit the ground running. Um, you haven't got time to like, oh, we'll just see how this window goes and we'll start bedding in. You need to actually hit the ground running. Hence why I think Vavel's coming, just for talent IQ. And um, because... Um, Ashworth isn't a, a, a transfer guy off the... He's more of a brings it together. And Vavel is just, I think, they've bought in, in my opinion. Somebody that has got an idea on what talent's out there, at what level and what prices. Because, like I said, they can't write off the summer and just say, we're just bedding in this summer. It won't really work, will it? No, we can't write off another summer. We, we're, we're the biggest club in the world who, who are not challenging for the title. It's as simple as that. And we need to move on. We need to move fast. And we and whatever it takes, I accept it. As long as it gets us back to the top, I don't care. As long as we get back to the top. Because we've been far too long in the doldrums United have. And uh, I'm not happy about fourth. I'm not happy about fifth. You know, I'm not happy mm. just being a trophy club. I want a challenge for the title now. I want a challenge for the Champions League title now as well. Obviously, we can't this year. But next year, I want a champion challenge for the, title, the Champions League. We're Manchester United, and if it, if it, if it comes to bringing in the players that are the, the backroom staff that's going to make it happen, make it happen. As long as it makes us back go back to the top, that's all I want. To be honest with you, um, in regards to United and their business, we've got a lot of work to do. That, mm. Yeah, probably what you said, didn't it? That's why we need recruitment officers and we need people like that. Players in, players out, backroom staff. Obviously, there's people who are going to lose their job too, which is sad as well. Um, court of the, the, the staff I heard as well so it's, it's going to be a busy summer if we get half of it done I'll be impressed but and the, the first team is all I care about at the moment the team on the pitch that's what I care about and Ten Hag having his team ready for the pre-season I was looking at the staffing issue um, I saw two arguments to this um, well two sides that kind of supported it not arguments one was saying that, that if there was less people they were saying we'd probably be a bit more efficient and the second one was, if you compare us to Liverpool as an example, because Liverpool really are only, um, they're not a multi-club kind of, and they're a big club, right? Liverpool have got eight, 790 or 
760 staff members. Just uh, call it 800. And we have 1,120. Um, so it, it is a problem. And I think um, it's very unfortunate and it's very sad to see. But whenever a takeover or a, a company is bought, that's the first thing that always happens is that staff kind of start getting moved. And this argument of, well, if you sell two Mason Mounts, you can save on the... It's not about just the saving. It's about the efficiency of trying to do things. And because there's so many layers of people, if there's less people, you could probably work a lot better, more quicker. Things can get implemented. You know, talking of staff, what are your thoughts around Ten Hag's new staff, which have not been announced yet, but we all know it's about to happen. What are your thoughts around that? Him, cha him, him changing his backroom staff. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited about it. We've got obviously Rene Hake and Ru Van Nistroy. Ru Van Nistroy, of course, could help the strikers a little bit because obviously we weren't blessed with goals last season, so he could probably help with uh, obviously Rasmus Hoyland and his finishing, his positioning. He can probably help him with Rene Hake. He can help with the discipline. We, we, we lack discipline. Of course, that was evident last season with various players, partying, tweets, you name it. We had it all last season. But we need a bit of discipline in there. We need a bit of solidarity in that club. So Rene Hake would bring that. Ru Van Nistelrooy would bring that um, experience of scoring goals, experience of being at Manchester United. And it would probably do wonders for the uh, for, for, Ru, for Rasmus Hoyland and probably Xerxes if we get Xerxes as well. So it would probably work wonders for those two. And... Uh, Hopefully, uh, they're coming quick because um, at the moment, <laughs> nobody's coming yet so far. So, we're waiting at the moment. Waiting, yeah, waiting I think... But, but why do you think Ten Hag allowed this? What are your thoughts? Why do you think he allowed these changes to happen? What do you mean? At the backroom staff? Or... Yeah. Yeah. So, why do you think... Obviously, some... Uh, let's just say Mitchell van der Gaag will go. McLaren will get moved as well to somewhere else. Why do you think he's allowed this to happen then? Is it is, it, is like... he admitting that... It wasn't up to what it should be for a Premier League term, or is it? What What are your thoughts? Why do you think he said, "Okay, you can change my backroom team"? I think, in regards to like Benny McCarthy, I think it's not working. I mean, he's there to help the strikers, and we ain't scoring goals, so we haven't improved, you know. And then, obviously, um, I think that our team. I'm not. I'm not going to be like really out of order to Steve McLaren and stuff because obviously he's a legend when it comes to the assistant manager, 1999, whatnot. I think he needs his full team. We know that McLaren wasn't his choice. I know it wasn't his choice. He didn't want McLaren. Um, it's just a nostalgic thing that he thought, okay, I bring McLaren because he knows the club, and that was it. But Ru Van Nistelrooy and, and uh, Rennie Hacko, they know Ten Hag. Ten Hag knows them, and this is his team now. There is no excuses. 100% his team. And um, now um, he's got his team. I think we can move on in a positive positive way. That's no offence to the other guys that are there. I think he made a mistake. Probably realised he's made a mistake. It's not working. And he thought, let's change this up a little bit. Let's freshen it up. And we see how we go. But there's no excuses now in regards to backroom staff and etc. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, news has just broke whilst we were on that. Um... Ten Hag has extended his contract. I'm going to share the screen um, so me and you can just go through this. Um, give me a sec. Uh, da, 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 let me just get this up. Right, okay, here we go. So this is just broke. Ten Hag extends United contract. Eric Ten Hag has extended his contract as Manchester United's men's first team manager until 2026. Eric Ten Hag has said, I am very pleased to have reached an agreement with the club to continue working together. Looking back at the past two years, we can reflect with pride on two trophies and many examples of progression from where we were when I joined. However, we must also be clear that there is still lots of hard work ahead to reach the levels expected at Manchester United which means challenging for English and European titles. In my discussions with the club, we have found complete unity in our vision for reaching those goals, and we are all strongly committed to making that journey together. Dan Ashworth, Manchester United Sporting Director, said, With two trophies in the past two seasons, Eric Ten Hag reinforced his record as one of the most consistently successful coaches in European football. 
while the club's review of last season highlighted areas of, of improvement, it also reached a clear conclusion that Eric Ten Hag was the best partner for us to work within driving our standards and outcomes. This group of players and staff have already shown that they are capable of competing and winning at the top level. Now we need to do it more consistently. With our strengthened football leadership team now in place, we are looking forward to working hand in hand with Eric to achieve our shared ambitions for this football club. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the biggest uh, thing I, I, which raised an eyebrow was it's only a one-year deal. So it, it, it doesn't really show proper solidarity, does it? Really. <laughs> if it they've given him a one-year deal. It's so 20, obviously that doesn't yeah, they've, extended him, they, they've extended him by two extended years. Extended it by one year. So it's yeah. two years altogether, really. Two seasons. Um, I don't mind that. Yeah, I, I don't mind that in case it does go pear-shaped. Um, obviously, we won't have to pay too much money, blah, 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 hopefully. But um, a one-year deal is a bit, a bit crazy for me. I'm happy he's been given a new deal. Um, hopefully, next season, we will, he will, things will improve. They have to improve. I mean, no more excuses now. No more injuries. Sal, you know, you know, I was, um, I, I was quite straightforward on this matter. I felt um, he... I, he, I think he survived because there was no other option out there. This is just my view, right? Um, I felt uh, he, my turning point on him was the Tottenham game at home when Tottenham played their fourth choice midfield and they played us off the park. And I was like, they've got injuries. And so we, why are they playing like that? And we're not. And um, look, what you, all you hope for now is that he learns from last year and doesn't repeat their mistakes and starts to get us to perform at a, at, a, at a level that he is capable of because his teams do usually play good football. Um, and hopefully, look, they've extended it. Like you said, him going into next season with just a year left would have been a, a nightmare because if he would have lost a couple of games, the pressure would have been on. And then if he would have got to January and they've not extended him, rumours would have started circulating. He's speaking to X club, Y club, and it would have undermined the whole season. So that's a positive. They've extended. Um, I'm sure uh, you'll cover it on your channel. We've covered it loads on our channel, but there's not much more to cover on Eric Ten Hag other than he needs to let's just get started. But let's just come back to um, what we were discussing um, regarding the leadership team and um, this summer now. What are your thoughts on the potential first three incomings of Delit, Xerxy and Ugarte. Let's just say they are the first three signings. What are your thoughts around them? Um, I, I'm, I'm happy about the signings. I would place a little bit of caution on Delict. Um, there was a good point made by Andy Cole that um, players who get sold and they go for less than they, they did previously, it rings alarm bells really. And um, I know that Dilic is a very talented player. I'm not saying he's not a talented player, but he's not he's not going to be a Yap Stam, for example. I think there's never I mean, another Yap Stam, Sal. There's yeah. never another Yap Stam. But it's just Nothing that for the, over the last few signings, we have from Ajax, they haven't worked out, have they? We had Daily Blind, we had Anthony, we had Van der Beek, you know, and they haven't really worked out as well as we thought they would work out. So I'm I'm very cautious, as again, cautious optimism. With Delict. Ugarte, I like another player who hasn't worked out quite at PSG, but P who works out at PSG at the end of the yeah, day? That's true. You know, and we've had players who haven't worked out before. Obviously, I say Cantona and people like that who've been at clubs and it, it had a mess and then come and become legends at United. But obviously, they were under the right stewardship in Sir Alex Ferguson, you know. But I think it, it's good. It's good news. It's, it, it's always positive news to have new signings, you know, positive news about a defender, we need to fix that defence, severely need to fix that defence. I don't think we just need uh, Delict. I'm not sure Delict is an upgrade to Raphael Varane. This is the thing, you know, um, Raphael Varane is a, is a Rolls Royce of a defender, as we know. Yeah, you know, he, was, he was, he was a sensational player. He just wasn't bloody fit enough. He was a very good player. Yeah, and, but is, is Delict fit, you know, <laughs> this is the thing, you know. Al, you know, just coming on to that, sorry, just to just to give a bit of context, I had a look at this quite in depth yesterday about his injury record. He, bar two major injuries, he's not that injured that often. And 
he he's on average he misses about eleven games a season. Um, he he I saw him. Um, so obviously we were all aware of him, right? Um, that I remember watching him against Arsenal in the first leg of the Champions League um, this year, and I thought bloody hell, he's some player. I thought one thing that I think will work in his favour over another defender coming from Europe is that he's very physical. He's very, very physical. So the physicality of the league, he will not find difficult. But you're right in what you're saying as well, that is he an upgrade on Rafael Varane? I don't think so. And I think as fans, we have to um, sometimes um, we, we be realistic that we're, we're eighth. We're not going to sign a player that gets us to first. We're probably going to have to go in two phases. Our first phase will probably be we need to get to third or fourth in the league. Does Delit get us there? Probably. Would he get into Tottenham? Yes, he would. Would he get into Villa? Yes, he would. That's who we're competing with. Right. Once we get to that level, then it's about elevating again, in my opinion. Do you agree with that or... Yeah, yeah. But you see, football's a simple game, you know. It's just the way you you set a team up. You know, I, right. I come from the days of John O'Shea and, you know, Wes Brown and, and people like that who were, weren't world beaters, but they knew how to... Wes Brown, was a, was a, he was a solid defender. Solid. solid. Solid, but you wouldn't put him in a class of a Carfu or something like that, would you? No. You know, it was just... No. It, we, we were just well run as a club. Like, if you look at Manchester City, for example, is Ake really great? Is he... Mm, you know, for I don't, Bournemouth. I don't think the Kanji's that good either. Yeah, Kanji's. They're not, they're not world beaters. It's just the system that they play. They play in a system that works and the, the players, they fit that system. If we play a system that fits uh, Delict, it's going to work. You know, it's going to work. I mean, you could win league titles with John Curtis in the back, you know? It's just the way it is. It's just that how you run, how your tactics are, and etc. Um, and as long as your attacking players do well as well. But I Let's think... Let's prove uh, that. Yeah, um, I think uh, was it Van uh, Delict is a is a solid player. I think he's he's drifted off a little bit. I think he should have came to Man United first time, but then everything happens for a reason, you know. Yeah. Bayern Munich. I'm I'm surprised that they want to sell him though. Bayern Munich. They've got Di Have they still got Dyer there? Is on loan? Yeah. So they've got Dyer. They've got uh, Upamecano. They've got um, the Korean lad. Yeah, and they bought and they're bringing in Tar from Leverkusen and another one. Um, uh, and they just want to get rid of him, uh, which is fine. Um, I remember looking at Mo Salah. Honestly, I remember when Liverpool signed him. My mate's a Liverpool fan. I took the piss out of him. I went, Mo Salah, he shits him. Like, why have you signed him? I saw him at Roma once, or I think at Fiorentina. I think he's not that good. But it shows that... I sit, like, if you, right, let's just look at a modern... Forget Mo Salah. If you look at Phil Foden for England, he's no good, right? Because he's a system player. And when he plays for City, he's like, oh, he's really good. And sometimes the system brings the best out of you as well. And if you look at Eric Dyer, you just mentioned him. He looks phenomenal for Bayern Munich. And he, when you watched him at Tottenham, you thought, this guy's awful. You know, I saw him against Madrid. And I thought, this is Eric Dyer. He looked really like, he didn't look out of place at any point. He looked solid. So I think sometimes a manager or a system can get the best out of you. Um, Delit had a really good season under Nagelsmann. Um, and then Tuchel just didn't fancy him at all. And then he kind of went with his own pickings. But what about Ogate then and Xerxes? What are your thoughts around them two? Xerxes, again, um, he's had a phenomenal season for Bologna, of course. Um, he's, he's Everyone has young. a Bologna, right? <laughs> yeah, I think he is a player of the season or something, a young player yeah. of the season. The only thing with Xerxes, he's not pro he hasn't been prolific in his career. Correct. Obviously, he scored about 16 goals for Anderlecht. Uh, didn't score any goals for Palma on loan, scored about four goals for Bayern Munich. So I'm hoping with Ten Hag, he can, he can, he can turn him into a prolific striker because that's what we need. We need someone who's going to be prolific. But he's young and he's going to learn and uh, a skillful player with a lot of talent, obvious talent. So hopefully he improves at United. Um, who's the other player that uh, we're linked with? It's uh, Zaxi and um, Ugarte, yeah. Ugarte, yeah, from yeah, PSG. Yeah, Ugarte. I like the South American thing. I think when, when, when you get players from South America, they're always going to wear their heart on their sleeve, you know? Yeah, very aggressive I mean, as well. Yeah, I think during 2008, when we had Tevez, he was probably the key member what of the team. Yeah, What a even player. Yeah, even though what he did is what he did, but he was the key he member of the team. one hell of a player. Yeah. 
added that bite. You know that fight in them. You know that little bit of naughtiness. That it's all that the meat they eat in, in Argentina and Uruguay. The big meat eaters so they're hotheads. Yeah, look at Lucha Martinez. You know, so important to our team. He adds that bit of fearlessness that we need, and we need that in the midfield to complement Menu. This finesse of Menu. Then you have Ugarte who's a bit of a, a rough player in the middle there, like a keen sort of thing. And you have mainly like a skull sort of type player. It'd be, it, you know, it would be a good signing. I think it would be a good signing, those two, obviously. And as you said, there's layers to it, isn't it? It's like if we qualify for the Champions League, then we can go up. Yeah, and... exactly. And, and these, all these players need to do is, is to get us into top four. That is how I look at this. And I don't, you know, this argument that would Ugarte get into City? Well, no, he wouldn't. But we're not competing with City, really, are we? We're competing with Villa and Tottenham. Would a guy get into Tottenham and Villa? Probably, yes, he would. Right, once they get us into third or fourth, then we can then go and look at, you know, uh, a top CDM, a top striker. We're, we're going to have to go in stages because we're not going to go from eighth to second. You know, it's very doubtful, but it can happen. But we need to... Uh, strategically go about this and be realistic and if we can I remember when Liverpool bought players like Robertson for you know so many players that and they fed a system and they took them up and then they added the gold dust into that and even with Arsenal when they when they got rid of everyone and they bought in like so many players that you looked at you thought really like even um I forgot the lad's name their midfielder the number 10 the captain Odegaard yeah. Odegaard, you know, when they bought him and they loaned him in originally, then they bought him, and then you thought, really, then and then they added in your rices and your this, but they bought players like Trossard that you know he went really cheap, nobody really touched him, but they kept adding into it, adding in, adding in, and eventually they ended up with a team that was, uh, I think, it's a really good team, Arsenal's. And I think we need to have the similar approach rather than saying, right, we're eighth, and next year. We need to take on City and Liverpool and go for it. It's possible, but realistically, we're going to have to go in two, three phases. And in each phase, we're going to have to buy players that keep elevating us up a level. Yeah, 100%. Um, of course, uh, we hope that the players we do sign just surprise us and they become world beaters and we'll be challenging. Absolutely. You know, we hope so. It's a bit like what Sir Alex Ferguson did back in the day, bringing in unknown players, Michael, Ron Johnson, Berg... Solskjaer, these type of players were unknown when, when they came in, but they bedded into the team perfectly. And, you know, but obviously they, had, they went into a team of winners already. Of course, that makes a big difference, you know. We have to create yeah. our own winning mentality first, uh, a team of winners, a team who can lead from example. Because at the moment, we, we're building that. We won the FA Cup, yeah. We're building a team of, of winners and leaders. Because at, at the moment, we've got a few players there who are serial losers, so to speak, in regards to the Premier League and the Champions League. We need more winners in there. If we can become a, a winning team, then we can add players here, add a world-class player there, you know, and just improve it. But we hope these players are young. Ugarte, I think, is a very good player. I mean, I mean, last we, year... Sal, I don't know if you're aware. We tried... To, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but we looked at him last year before he went to PSG. Lisbon, yeah. 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 I remember, and uh, he's a very good player. And sport in Lisbon, we know what their uh, conveyor belt of youngsters is yeah, like. Yeah, they have very good players. Dani and Ronaldo, you know. So, and, and there's also Ignacio that we want as well from from sport in Lisbon. Uh, yeah. They got a very good youth team, and I would be very happy with regard to their PSG are just a different type of problem. They they haven't won the Champions League. They got so many problems at that club. It's it's, it's unreal, and no one has really made it there. To be honest with you, no one has really killed it. Absolutely smashed it at PSV, so a PSG, sorry. So I'm I'm a bit sceptical in regards to failing at PSG because maybe yeah, there's expectations. Know, one player I want to add in, just to get your thought on it, is what, what, because I've seen him quite a bit over the last year or two and I think he's really, really good, but for some reason um, he's not highly rated. Is Rabiot for France and, and Juve. What do you think of him? Experienced, um, he's a great player. Controls he's very the, good, the yeah. Midfield. Ex PSG as well. <laughs> yeah, he controls the midfield well. He, he's, he's he's strong, physical as well. Physical, yeah, and he's always there for France. He's there in the first team every single tournament. He's there, you know. Obviously, he has Kante next to him, of, of course. But um, the only problem is obviously is his, his family, his mum, and things like that. He's he's a he has an attitude problem apparently. But who doesn't have an attitude problem? You know, we've got attitude problems all over the club at the moment, in different ways. We've got different personalities. I think he would be a good signing. 
It's a free transfer, you know. If it's a free transfer, isn't it? So yeah, he's free. It will be. It will be a, a good coup for us. It would. It would add that we we need them type of players just to get us over the line in regards to the top four. You know. Yeah, that's like players. I said. You need. We need to add in players that just get us into that top four, and then we can go again. You know, that's all they need to do is just elevate us above Villa, Spurs, Chelsea, and then go again. That's the aim of the game, in my opinion. Which which players? Do you think realistically will leave the club? Realistically, um, we we'll obviously Lindelof will leave. Van but let's start with leave. the defense. Who do you think from the defense? Who do you think would go? I think Juan is going to go. I think Victor Lindelof will go as well. Um, I do believe we have to keep one. We can't. We can't get rid of all of them because if we do, we're going to be very short. You know, so we might have to keep a Maguire, for example. In, in the squad. I know Maguire, yeah. but if we get a good offer for Maguire, we take it, don't we? Because obviously he's got a year he had an injury problem. He's got one yeah. year left, Maguire. Yeah, yeah, one year left. So take the money, I would say. Um, Lindelof's going to go, I think. Oh, wan is obviously interesting, the likes of Fenerbahce and West Ham and Galatasaray, of course. So And Lindelof. Jose Mourinho wants him back, isn't it? So... Um, there's a few players there in the defence that will go in the uh, So let's say one attacker Lindelof as your defenders that would go. Um let's look at um what about midfield? I'll cash in on McTominay. Um one hundred percent I'll cash on in on McTominay. Um I think he's gonna give us a full profit as well if we do sell him. We almost sold him to West Ham last year, but he didn't want to go. Um, I don't think we've got too many to sell, but Casemiro as well, his wages, of course, is, is sky high. But I'm, I'm saying this as it, it, hypothetically, like if they, if they actually replace these players. I don't want them selling these players if they don't replace them. Do you know what I mean? So if they, if they get rid of Casemiro and McTominay, I, I need to see two good players in there as well. But McTominay and Casemiro would be the choices. I would, I would sell them if I had the choice. And what about, uh, would, you, would, you, would you look at reloaning uh, Amrabat. Um, I, I believe we. How much we owe? Ten million on Amrabat. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Um, I like Amrabat. I do. I think he'd be a good squad player. Um, just like the defense, I think we 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 can't sell them all. We either keep a McTominay or keep an Amrabat, and keep them on the bench. Um, McTominay can't be a first team player. McTominay puts in a fantastic shift. He does all the time. But to get to the quality where we want to go to, like mm -hmm. we, he's not good enough. Amrabat, I was impressed with Amrabat at, uh, at the latter stages of the of the loan deal. I was impressed with him in the FA Cup final. I thought he was a bit unlucky with the injury. He went to left back as well. So I was a bit like, you know, he hasn't proven himself as much as he could. But I would keep Amrabat, I would. And I'll spend 10 million on keeping him. Him and Ugarte, we, we need a squad, you know. And, and what about you know, Christian Eriksen? Yeah, he needs to go as well. He's too slow. Don't He's too slow, beat. man. <laughs> huh? Donny van der Beek. He's got to go. I mean, there's the, four there. I know, and it's like we've got too many, you know. And van der Beek, unfortunately, 27 years old, he's had three years wasted at Man United. He, he needs to, he needs to go, man. He needs to take a. We need to try and get rid of him somehow. He, I don't think anyone's going to buy him. This is the thing. They haven't impressed when they got on loan as well. This yeah. is what makes it worse. You know, he didn't impress last season, and if if he impressed on loan, just like uh, Greenwood did. Then you know other teams will be in for them, but you know Van der Beek is just we're gonna have to cut our losses with him and just maybe release him or something. But um, you know it's it's gonna be a bit difficult. We might have to sell him for peanuts to someone back to Holland or something, Sparta Prague or yeah. some team like that, or you know Vitesse Arnhem or something. We have what to about just... what about the front line then? Let's go through right wing. So you, just do the front line. Who do you think we'd sell from the front line then? Um, I think sometimes you have to admit when you got it wrong, you know, and I think Anthony, we've got it wrong. Okay. Um, I don't think Anthony is up to the quality of a right winger should be. I think he's too predictable, cuts in shoots, cuts in shoots. I think teams have read him like a book. I like his work ethic. I do. Like when he comes on a substitute, he really Yeah, he does have hard. a good work ethic and a work rate, he's, yeah. He's got a good work ethic, but I just don't think it's worked out for him, to be honest with you. I think we need someone better. Um... It, I mean, it, it depends what Ten Hag is thinking. Is Ten Hag going to take it on the chin and say, 
you know, we got it wrong with Anthony. We need to we need to move on from him, you know. So I would have got... liked Elise to come through the door, you know, but now Elise isn't coming to United. It's going to be, we need a creative right winger. Of course, we're used to David Beckham and people like that who, who can create. We haven't got no one on the wing who can create, you know, and this is the problem. Maybe we need to change our wingers, you know. Um, on With with, with uh, Ahmad, um, Ahmad Arkeep, I think he's a very talented player, but it's whether he wants to stay and fight for his place. He needs to fight for his place. If he plays, he's going to have to play as a, as a, as a squad player, I think. Um, he's a good player. Obviously, he needs to play more, of course. Um, we also could play Garnacho there. We know, you know. It, well, it's, there's uh, Saldas Palestri as well. I know. Uh, pa Palestri, Palestri, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, I, I just think he's a bit lightweight in regards to right wing. Yeah, he is. Um, I think he hasn't got upper body strength. In the Premier League, you need that. You need that upper body strength. You need that. He's a bit quiet. He doesn't. He lacks personality. Um, he's had chances. He's done okay. Okay, but it's not like wow, this guy is so well. When you take when you come into the main night team, just like Kobe did and, and players like that, you gotta grab your opportunity. You gotta do something in that game. You think, wow, you know, that player's good. You know, like like Kobe Mainu will come and score a goal against Wolves in the last minute. You know, it's things like that just really you go click, that guy's got personality. He's got personality. I think you know players who run fast but then lose the space as they're going along the pit. It's like they've got a fridge on their back. And it just seems like he's, he hasn't got the, that, that certain thing, you know, that spark you need from being at Man United. He's a good player. That's it. Uruguay are a good team with good players. And that's it. And I think he's just a good player. He's not going to be a well player. I'll try and cash in. If, so you cash opinion. in on Anthony Palestri. San, what about Sancho? Yeah, we've got to cash in on him as well. We can't keep Sancho. We can't keep Sancho. What he did at uh, yeah, used, I uh, agree. Experience. We can't keep Sancho. It's absolutely disrespectful what he did. Um, he hasn't set the world alight, even under Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. He didn't set the world alight. Um, once you start writing tweets on Twitter, um, it, it's so disrespectful to the club. You, I mean, you look at you compare him to a player like Maguire. Maguire's had a lot of bad things go on with him. Obviously, he had this issue in Greece, but then he had the captaincy removed for him. From him, he's out of the England team. Do you ever see him opening his mouth? You ever see him tweeting about, oh, I should be in the England squad, not dunk, you know? You know, do you ever see him opening his eyes? He's a good professional. Maybe that he, Sancho should have took a leaf out of Maguire's book. I think Sancho, um, a little bit like Rashford, they're, they're owned by and run by the wrong people. You know, if Sancho was, if I managed Sancho, it'd be like, nah, mate, just leave it. Take a walk. You know, let's go out. Forget about it. You know, don't say anything. Say it to his face. You know, and last season, he left that tweet on there for two weeks. And obviously, uh, Ten Hag, what he did for him, giving him three months off paid. And then to do that, you know, for just saying that you didn't train well, is so disrespectful. So I, w I would sell Sancho. Yeah. Uh, but and people have to pay up. You know, there's a lot of talk, especially at teams like Dortmund. They have to pay up. It's as simple as that. Greenwood. Um, my, I mean, I was a big fan of Greenwood when he broke into the team. Oh, you know, uh, generational, generational talent. The new, the new Robin Van Persie. People were saying, you know, it's so sad what's going on with um, uh, Greenwood. But unfortunately, we're going to have to let him go. Um, sadly, because it's not just about United. It's not just about us. It's about him as a person, his mental health, him coming to the Premier League. I'm old enough to remember David Beckham. I was in the stadiums, you know, when, when David Beckham was getting the abuse and some of the abuse I heard was disgusting, honestly. I felt for him and Greenwood will get a lot of abuse next season if he comes back into that Manchester United team. You can imagine the kind yeah. of abuse he's going to get, you know. So I think it's better for him to be moved on. I do think we make mistakes. You know, he's made a big mistake here. 100%, you know, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and we're all human beings. We're little intricacies, intricacies of emotions and, you know, etc. We all have our bad days and sometimes we're fragile, as Eric Cantona once said. Yeah, sometimes and I think, we're fragile. I think I, look, what he did was very wrong. Um, but at the same time, he is very young. I'm not saying keep him or don't keep him. I think just for the sake of the scrutiny for him and what it would bring to Manchester United, it's best to just sell him on and... That way you can just also you can set the tone that we will not accept this kind of behavior 
from our players as well, which is wrong. You know, everyone should be respected. It's unfortunate. He is a generational talent, but, um, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And it's best if he moves on and then um, you, you, you don't get the, 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 the circus that will come around it. And, the, uh, and I don't think the club want that. And just while someone this question, the, the, the one that I think should leave, but I want to hear your opinion is Marcus Rashford. Um, you know, like, there's, it's a very touchy subject, this Marcus Rashford, isn't it? It is you know, 100%. He's, 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 he obviously man born and bred and, you know, um, I just think there's too many problems surrounding him. I think there's too much noise. We are at a stage now as Manchester United where it's crucial, it's crucial that we get it right. Yeah, and we don't need noise externally around us, our players in particular, Rashford is hot and cold, too hot and cold. And we yeah. have to think about what Sir Alex would have done. We have to take a step back and what the past, what we would have done in the past. What will the great teams in world football do with a player like Marcus Rashford? I mean, you know, I, I just don't think, I think we should cash in on him now. You know, we, we're too nostalgic. We're too emotional when it comes to our players, I think. And I just think that He's run by his family. His agent is his brother or something like that. And, you know, they never yeah. tell him anything wrong. We're in a generation now where you can't be told so, you know, wrong. You know what, what I can't get my head around? Sorry to cut you to start that. It's just, and I see a lot of big YouTubers, they don't mention this, and I find it really interesting, is, um, you know, oh, he's, he, he, he's going through, okay, we don't know what he's going through, right? It could be a lot of things. But, one thing that nobody mentions, and I find it very interesting, is his body language and his attitude stinks on the pitch. It's very, very poor. And if you compare that to Anthony, somebody that might not have the skill set of Rashford, but when he's on that pitch, he does give his best, right? You know, Scott McTominay might not have the skill set of Rashford, but they try their best. They, you know, you can see that. But with Rashford, I have seen him. He'll go for a header, not really go for it. He will leave his left back exposed. You know, he he went on the he went on a night out and then lied, which is huge, and it just gets brushed under the carpet. Yeah, I and mean, we have to remember who we are. You know, there were players like Lee Sharp who had ten times the talent that Lee, that um, Rashford has. You know, who were who were kicked out of the club because they wouldn't listen. You know, we, we need to remember who we are. Lee Sharp was once rated higher than Ryan Giggs. Yeah, yeah, he know? was. And then he had to go. You know, he weren't listening. Party animal, going out, partying. You know, if you're not going to listen, if you're not going to get in line, you go. You know, we're about winning. We're not about Marcus Rashford, you know. Marcus Rashford, the problem with Marcus Rashford is he can't take criticism. You know, criticism is a blessing. It should be used as a, as a tool for motivation. If my manager calls me out, it means he believes in me. It means, he, it means I can do better. It means, you know, I'm a good player. That's what he needs. You know, 100%. and that's what they need to do. They need to see it as half glass, half full. Well, the manager's mentioned me. The manager wouldn't mention a youth player in his, in his, in his press conference if he didn't, be, you know, because he doesn't believe in that player. Because, you know, he will mention a player if he believes in that player and he relies on that player. You know, and Rashford going from like nearly 40 goals of last season to nothing. You know, this is six to 10 goals he scored, something like that. It, you know, it just goes to show you that he turns it on when he wants. And we don't want a player like that. We know Rashford is a very good player, but I've seen that. I've seen it on numerous occasions. They're walking on the pitch, not challenging for balls. Andrew, yeah, this, it's pretty cool. this is Manchester United, right? And I know I keep saying that, I keep pressing on that, but people die for this club, yeah? And we need people who will give their all on the pitch because those before him gave their all on the pitch, you know? And what made me fall in love with this club you know, was, was the history of the club, you know, the, the Busby Babes, etc. Because when I started sporting this club, there was no Premier League title for 24 years at the time when I started sporting May United. But, you know, a um, player like Rashford should look at that, look at the players before him, you know, and look at who he's playing for. He's in a very fortunate position here, playing for Manchester United, right, that many would give their right arm to do. He seems like he doesn't care. He says he cares, but show it on the pitch. Because, Correct. you know, if he cares, we know how good he is. We know he's a 40 goal a season man. We can do it if he wants to do it. He knows, but he's choosing not to. It's like there's him against the fans. 
You know, it's a bit like the Bellingham thing. You know, it's like him against the fans. The fans, as soon as you start falling out with the fans, that's when it, when it becomes an issue. I don't agree with some of the abuse he gets. But agree, sometimes yeah. he doesn't bring it on himself. He starts doing, um, you know, hand signals when he scores a goal. You know, you score one goal in 20 and then you're doing a, a hand signal. You know, come on. You know, why don't you just try and build a relationship with the fans? Build, you know, and then the fans are warm to you more. But, man, we are about... Yeah, just, do the, just do the basics on the pitch at least. You know, yeah. headache, tackle, track back. You know, so you care. You, That's it. you're a senior player. Yeah, senior player. And he's man born and bred as well. He knows the club. He should know the club. Manchester, he's from around the corner from the club. He should know. You know, he should not understand where where the club have come from, the adversity, etc. Anyone who, who down tools for Man United is disrespecting the badge. And to disrespect the, the club you supposedly support. I mean, I'll give my life on that pitch every single day if I could. You know, and he, he goes out there thinking, I'm Marcus Rashford. You, you know, you can't tell me anything. And I guess this is just a new school generation that they can't take criticism. You know, there are players who've been kicked in the head and with a boot and things like that, you know, and still played for the club, you know. Uh, but it, it just seems like it's just not working out. And sometimes you have to cut your losses and say, look, it's not working out. PSG Absolutely. want you. Yeah, Absolutely. PSG want you. And I think that'd be a great fit for him. Go yeah. to Paris. Enjoy it. That's it. And do you think on. in Paris... And do you think in part, I agree with that. I agree with the outgoings that you said also. I think them players should all leave. And my last question then, Sal, which is a, a, a touchy question, let's just say for fans. Would you prefer a new Old Trafford or would you prefer to redevelop Old Trafford? Uh, no, you know, when I first started supporting United, the most important thing about supporting United, uh, when I first ever went to Traf Old Trafford when I was a child, I wanted to see the Munich clock. Right, mm. and I wanted to take a picture with the Munich clock. Um, going to Old Trafford is a privilege, and it's one of the most beautiful sights you see when you come off the tram and you walk past the cricket ground and you see the the big beams in, and etc. You know, um, I have too many good memories of Old Trafford just to say like, oh, we should move from Old Trafford. I don't think we should move to, from Old Trafford um, because the history about it. I mean, it, it should be a listed building, in my opinion. Mm. Um, so much history is involved in Old Trafford. Of course, we've got a problem with the train tracks. We've got issues around that. And, you know, I think if we do a Tottenham, we can rebuild the stadium whilst we're playing there. And, and I know people say, oh, we can't do that, Old Trafford, blah, blah, blah. But I've been to Old Trafford when there's been no North Stand, Sir Alex Ferguson Stand now. I've been to Old Trafford when there's been no South Stand in the early 90s, you know? Mm. And they've been building whilst we play. You know, I know it's going to be difficult for the season ticket holders. They're going to have to. It's going to sacrifice the season ticket holders for a year or two. But where are we going to play? This is the thing. You know, um, I, I I think they're going to, in my opinion, Sal, from what I've seen and what I've heard, because um, and you can see that you don't you don't put a task force like that together to redevelop a ground. I think they want to do the whole area. I don't know if you you might have seen this when uh, I think it was one of the last home games of the season. Keir Starmer was at the ground with Sir Jim Radcliffe. He's going to become Prime Minister tomorrow. And that tells you everything you need to know um, is that they obviously want to go big uh, with this. And if you compare it to Madrid, um, I think, look, I get both sides of the argument, yeah? Keeping it and against it. I think if you do move characteristics need to be similar to Old Trafford. You know, how it looks and how it feels. Certain elements can be... It's like, where, for example, something simple. I remember, and I'm sure you remember, the old Wembley when, the, when they used to walk out through the side tunnel and when they it moved it, better. they didn't like it. <laughs> exactly, right? So, if you do build a new... Things like that will make a big difference. Um, I think... Um, we'll find, I think by September, October, we'll have an idea on what direction they're going to go in regarding this. Um, but let's see um, what happens on this, um, Sal. If anybody wants to get in touch with you, follow you, watch your stuff, how can they do that? Um, you can follow me on at Stretford Post on X and uh, on YouTube. If you just type down Stretford Post, subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot of uh, material coming up. Yeah, before. Sal's got like two, three videos a day going out at the moment, I think. Uh, I have at the moment. I had a channel about a couple of years ago, but because I moved country, 
you couldn't do like live content in the UAE, like in regards to uh, monetization and stuff. You couldn't do it. So it's just recently come into play over here. So I had a break for two years. Obviously, there was a lot of mess going on with me and, you know, um, with the fan base and stuff because fan channels have a bad reputation, of course, you know. But I love the fan, my United fan base and I, and I wanted to stop for a while and say, hey, you know, because I'm, uh, you know, I came to a point when if I go to Old Trafford, I'm going to get my head put on a stool, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day. So no, we've um, all got opinions, right? It's just about... We've all um, got opinions, but you've got to the be able to. Is, I, I love this club. I've been loved this club since I was a child, since I was a little kid, right? And... The thing is, when I saw that certain fans who I respect, you, like guys like yourself, big United fans from Manchester, you know, when I saw they started going against me, I thought, you know what, what's going on here? You know what? I mean, I'm not happy about this. But I've created a channel. It's going to be far more positive. I'm going to have a lot of people on there, ex-players, etc., going on. If you just go to YouTube, type down Stratford Post, that'd be great. And don't forget to subscribe here as well. So Absolutely. Sal, it's been a pleasure. I'm sure we're going to do this again. Like I said, things are changing all the time. Uh, I yeah. really appreciate you taking time out and it's doing this. And thank you so much for your time, son. I really appreciate that. You're very welcome, pal. Thank you very much for having me.